So I was thinking kind of, you know, looking back, you've played obviously South Carolina at, at Reynolds. At what point do you remember in the time that you've been at State where you thought, okay, I, this thing is ready for these top type teams, Connecticut, South Carolina, to come to Raleigh? I'm ready. I want to play these games. Heck, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, when I first got here, I was out speaking in the summer on the caravan and Somebody in the back raised their hand. I may have told y'all this the other day and said, uh, you know, what's it going to take to get you to play UConn? And I said, somebody's probably going to have to get me drunk. So uh, I don't know. You know, we, uh, we, I think, made a decision to really try to have one of the best schedules in the country and uh, go out and, and play games that would get you exposure. I mean, again, it's on ABC. Uh, I don't know how many women's games are on ABC this year. Unfortunately, it's not a ton. And so, uh, you know, it's it's good to get that kind of exposure, put your players on that stage. And, again, they're going to expose every weakness that you have, and you're going to find out pretty early in the season what we have to get better at. But, uh, you know, I don't know, just uh, – feeling like we had a team that could compete at that level and um, trying to, you know, obviously South Carolina and UConn are definitely two of the top programs in the country. So a uh, good place to start, I guess. JC, you can go ahead. So many of the players have departed since the NCAA tournament game, but did you go back just to see kind of pick and roll defense against Page or show players on the current team about what is needed in the pick and roll against page. Yeah. I mean, we've, uh, we, our first, uh, film session was a combination of our game a year ago and our game two years ago. So, you know, it's really easy to sit here and say, well, we could do this or do that. But you know, when you've got page Beckers and AZ FUD, and then you got the person setting the pick is Aaliyah Edwards. Uh, I don't know if y'all have seen it, but uh, I just saw something today, top 25 players in the country. But anyway, those three are top 15 in the country. So, you know, again, you pick your poison. If you get up there and really get aggressive with her, now you're letting Leah Edwards roll to the bucket, and Leah Edwards leads them in scoring right now. So, uh, you know, again, a lot of weapons. So, but, yes, we've definitely looked at it and, we got to be prepared to try to mix it up and do some different things, uh, which, you know, we tried to do that in the NCAA game a couple of years ago. We just didn't do a good enough job of it. But again, she uh, she got hot that day and, uh, you know, we could have maybe done a better job of getting the ball out of her hands. But uh, she's a great player. Brian. Hey, Coach, you mentioned not a lot of women's games on ABC. For y'all to be for this time to take a part, part in one of those that are on there, what does that mean in terms of the growth of the game for both the women's game overall and your program? Yeah, you know, a year ago, we uh, our game with Louisville was chosen uh, and on ABC. So this back-to-back -back years, we've had a good game like that to be featured. and uh, But definitely it says a lot about, you know, uh, our program, what those kids that uh, have been here in the past have done to, to uh, promote it. And then the game itself, like you said, uh, the numbers for the Final Four this past year were, I think, 10 million viewers. And uh, it's just an exciting time, obviously, for our sport. And uh, now I think our contract is coming up. I think it's going to be a great time to – to maybe even get more exposure and, and maybe a better package, bigger package uh, for TV games. So uh, it's a great time, obviously. And uh, we're thankful to all those people that blazed the trail ahead of us and always go back. I was here with Kay Yao and then I was around Pat Summit a lot early in my career. So uh, those are the people that, uh, and quite honestly, Gino too, when you look at what he's done in that program and, uh, you know, they got it rolling now, as I mentioned, they got three of the top 15 players in the country, but when he went there, they, they weren't. So, uh, you got to tip your hat to him and, and what he's done in building that program. Rob, go ahead. I think Gino has a background at UVA, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. He was an assistant with Debbie Ryan, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, that was a really big rivalry for a lot of the younger people may not remember that, but Virginia State was a really big rivalry. Did y'all yeah. ever cross paths? How did that, you know, how have y'all ever interacted in that, in that period? Um, well, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, when I was an assistant here, he was already at UConn because we actually played Connecticut while I was here. Uh, that was during the Rebecca Lobo era and all that. But, uh, you know, he and I, we crossed paths. Even when I was at Chattanooga, we were in the same region a, a time or two. And I actually, uh, one year when I was at Chattanooga, uh, during fall break, I'd always go watch someone else practice for a couple of days, give our team, our players off. And and I actually went up and, and watched UConn practice a couple of days. And he was very generous with his time. And uh, we had opportunities to visit uh, before practice, after practice, things like that. And so, um, yeah, you know, go back a good little bit. But uh, I guess when he was with Debbie Ryan, might have been while before I uh, came here to state. Peter, go ahead. Yeah, Wes, uh, the other day, the uh, players, Mimi and Isaiah, were talking about looking forward to this game. Can you give us a feel for your team their what are they feeling looking like you know what vibe are you getting from them for this game Exc- excitement you know our practices the last two days have been really upbeat and and uh they you know again got a lot of respect for UConn and what they've done I, I hadn't even sat down and thought about it I don't think we had but maybe you know <laughs> I don't know as I may be the only player that was here when we played them I'm not sure but uh, so it's not like there's a whole lot of carryover from that standpoint, but just, you know, it's UConn, the respect you have for their program. And yet our players, you know, they're excited, they're confident and, and, uh, they should be, I mean, we, uh, it's, it's a great opportunity is what I told them. And it's early in the year, either way is not going to make or break your season. So, uh, you got to build on it from there, but uh, it'll be fun. You know, this is what the players want to play in they want to play in games like that so uh it's going they're they're excited though and got a lot of energy thanks jc go ahead when to see james go off like she did in the first quarter did you did you joke with her at all be like save some for yukon no uh you know at the end of the i told somebody the other day at the end of the first quarter i was thinking about making reservations for uh, for our team at the final four and then after the second quarter, I was thinking about making reservations for my retirement party. So, uh, you know, it's just the way it goes. I mean, we had all the momentum. We're hitting everything in the first quarter. In the second quarter, we couldn't buy a bucket. So, uh, you know, we're going to have moments like that. We, we got a lot of young players that are going to have to contribute and help us. And uh, this is going to be good for them, too. And uh but uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was good. Get off to a great start. That first quarter was impressive. But Isaiah obviously was a big part of that. Uh, but really, everybody, like I said, Mimi Mimi was hitting shots, and uh, you know, defensively, I was real pleased with our effort. Uh, I thought we uh, played with urgency on the defensive end of the floor, which was a good thing in that second quarter when we couldn't score. At least we did a pretty good job defensively of keeping them about the same spot. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it was, it was great to see. I mean, that's good for Isaiah. Hopefully that does give her some confidence going in into this next game. Rob, go ahead. When you play these games and, and to be fair, I mean, Louisville and Notre Dame, they're pretty big too. And, you know, when do you ever sometimes maybe get reflective and think, wow, the renovation of this, the, playing these big games this is what I wanted this is for K Yao this is for a lot of people do you ever get reflective and think I'm, I'm sure that's kind of heavy at point is sometimes yeah I mean I've, I've got a picture at home from uh the uh first time we beat Notre Dame um and uh my Spencer and Dominique Wilson uh, are in that picture and uh, great memories of that game because uh, at the time Notre Dame was dominating the ACC and and winning it, it seemed like every year and uh, yeah you do a little bit you know when you get my age you got to reflect a little bit right but at the same time um, you know we <laughs> you you got to got to wake up in a hurry and and move on to the next one so just when you start feeling pretty good is when you're gonna get knocked on your butt so. 
at the same time, it's scary going into games like this because, you know, if you don't show up early in the game, whatever, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, they can expose you. So, uh, you go into these games excited, but also knowing that uh, you're going to have to play really well. JC, go ahead. Piggybacking off of two of Rob's questions, when you play teams like UConn and South Carolina, and now that you can talk about your class of 2024, do you see that payoff in any ways in recruiting the last two years, knowing that they have big games to look forward to when they come to NC State? Uh, no doubt. It's it's part of the factoring into your schedule. Uh, again, a lot of these players that, uh, we're recruiting right now. Saw the, you know, saw our game with UConn, the double overtime game to go to the Final Four, or whatever. Uh, and so, you know, they they definitely remember those moments and uh, hopefully see themselves playing for NC State in those situations. But uh, yeah, I mean, we're definitely it's it's a big big factor in these kids, these recruits. They want to play against the best and they want to play on the big stage. And so uh, we're trying to show them, we're going to put you in that situation. Rob, go ahead. So Wes, for this, this version of UConn, are they schematically similar to the other Geno teams over the years? Just, I, if you can, just maybe, especially for some of the layman's who are not well-versed on UConn's history, just sort of describe how they, approach things offensively and defensively? And does this version mesh with the other ones? Yeah, I think so. I mean, again, right now they have Paige Beckers and AZ Fudd both healthy. And uh, when you put them together, that's an unbelievable duo. Like I said, you with, and then throw Edwards in there, three of the top 15 players in the country in college basketball. So that's pretty rare. Uh, but yeah, offensively, uh, they do a lot, kind of like the Princeton stuff. Uh, with backdoor cuts and handoffs and uh, yeah, they're, you know, setting good picks, uh, making good reads. You know, it's not so much that they run a ton of sets. They, they're just well coached and, and in the game and know how to read a defense and, and uh, you know, exploit whatever you're doing. So I think offensively, that's very similar to what, what they've done in the past. And I think this group does it really, really well. JC, go ahead again. Do you ever joke with uh, FUD at any point, recruiting process, USA basketball, whatever, about her mom and, and how she played at NC State and, you know, the what what ifs? Do like, you ever joke with her or, or have talked to mom who might be in the building? Uh, yeah, mom? you know. The mom, uh, uh, I was, I got, I was pretty involved in, in the, in her recruitment when she was younger, her mom I'm talking about. Yeah. And, uh, then, uh, when it came up about time for her to make a decision, maybe heading the summer before her senior year is when I left, uh, to be a head coach at Francis Marion. Uh, actually we talked a couple of times after that and, I encouraged her. I felt like it was still a great decision to go to NC State. And, you know, things didn't work out. She had a great freshman year, but for whatever reason, she, you know, maybe homesickness, whatever, because she did go back to the D.C. area to to play uh, the rest of her career. But, you know, her mom was a great shooter, a great scorer. And uh, AZ's a lot like – AZ's one of the best shooters I've seen. I mean – Obviously, with USA Basketball, I was around her quite a bit when she was in Colorado. And just, uh, like I said, great, great catch and shoot, uh, or off the dribble for that matter. But I uh, haven't really talked a whole lot about her and her mom. I'm sure, you know, we did definitely try to recruit her when she was young and, uh, you know, would bring that up. And, and they came here unofficially and things like that. But, uh yeah, I never was quite enough to, uh, to to get her this way. Does anybody else have anything for Coach Moore? All right. Looks like we're good. Thanks again, uh, Coach. We really appreciate it. I will add one more. You know, y'all are asking, you know, <laughs> do you ever reflect and get all warm and fuzzy feeling? Uh, the first year we, we got uh, rentals renovated, 
we went down, uh, won a big road game and uh, got back, you know, it's midnight. And back then we were wearing, you know, suit and everything before COVID. And so I started to walk back up when we got here back to campus, I started to walk back up to my office and go around the court. But I thought, you know what? It's a big win tonight, big ACC road win. I'm going to walk through rentals and just, you know, soak it all in. And here I am in my dress shoes and uh, I think I had a drink in my hand, you know, soft drink, whatever. And, uh, you know, the roof still leaked a little bit here at rentals and it had been raining. And so I got about halfway across the court, hit a slick spot. And I mean, my feet went up higher in my head and I fell on my butt. And as I laid there on the floor, I thought, you know, that's what happens when you start feeling pretty good about things and think you've arrived. So, uh, yeah, we're not going to reflect a whole lot, you know, better, better keep your eye on the road and keep moving forward because there's a whole lot of obstacles out there. But anyway, story better for, reminder for all of us. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Thank y'all. Thanks, everyone.